I'm Dr. Gina Ross, and I'm running for U.S. Senate for the state of Missouri. I'm good trouble because people are my first priority. I will stay true to all people as I stay true to myself. I'm unbossed, unbought, and unbiased, paving the way for change. Please follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, or go to my website, RossForUSSenate.com. We're better together, building a better tomorrow beginning today. Business as usual is no longer acceptable and feel free to make a contribution. No dollar amount is too small. Thank you very much. What you see in the flesh I'm free from people Free from myself There's a liberty in Christ I am Well, welcome, welcome, welcome And you know, today we're going to be joined by Nathan Holloway And he's going to talk with us about student loan debt um, Welcome, Nathan Hi, great to be here. Yeah. So, and this is, uh, we're working with the campaign for Dr. Gina Ross for U.S. Senate. And she is running for the U.S. Senate seat for the state of Missouri. So we are, we're really ramping up and trying to let the constituents, those people here in the great state of Missouri know that our candidate Dr. Gina Ross is running, and one of her uh, one of her platform concerns is uh, stu our students. You know, student loan debt. Uh, as far as the uh, young people and people that do go to school and education, she does highlight education as far as her platform is concerned. She speaks on it, and uh, that is something that she is passionate about as far as education. Now, Nathan is the research analyst for the Dr. Gina Ross for U.S. Senate uh, State of Missouri 2022 campaign. So mm -hmm. he has done research on this, uh, this um, subject. And it, it makes sense because Nathan is a student himself, and of course, he's a young person that is doing the thing, you know, getting that education and participating in working with this great political opportunity here, uh, which is what we have as far as a right here in, in the United States of, of America, you know, the right to vote and the right to choose our candidates. So he has volunteered and has uh, come on board and he's got some information for us to check out. Yeah. So let's just go ahead and dive right in. Uh, welcome, Nathan. And, you know, just just do your thing. So let's go ahead and dive right in and check it out. Yeah. So to begin with this, we have a couple of just top hitters. Uh, the job market right now needs higher education. I mean, if you are going into anything that does technology, uh, such as, you know, what I want to do, you know, political analyst or research analyst uh, and anything like that or uh, anything with computers usually requires some kind of higher education. Mm -hmm. I mean, I had a roommate here uh, last semester who was a computer analyst and he told me that him and people in his profession that he wants to go into need to have the core understanding of computers. And you can really only get that if you are lucky enough to have a high school that has a very well-rounded computer program or if you go to college. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, higher education is, 
it, what I'm hearing you say, uh, Nathan, is that higher education isn't just uh, a luxury. It's no. really, it's a necessity, huh? It is. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Sure. And if you're not going into a trade, uh, most of these jobs out here, here in America, need some kind of education, whether that's an associate's, whether that's a uh, undergree bachelor's, a master's, or if you want to be in the medical profession, a doctorate. Yeah, for sure. And we need more people to understand, to realize that when we talk about student debt, it's not out of because people want to just go out and learn this information for the thrill of it. It's because we want to get a good paying job. It's because we want to have a place for us to have a future. You know, when when we talk about student debt, it always comes down to, you know, the cost. And that's our second point. This higher education comes with a high cost. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And for us to get these jobs, to participate in the economy, to participate in life as it is right now, mm -hmm. we need to pay this cost. Mm -hmm. But as our third point here, this desire for higher education comes with more debt. Yeah. We yeah. will we will spend, I will spend at least five, four decades, if I'm lucky, paying back my student loans just to get a job. Yeah, that is that's that is a burden on young people that is really uncalled for, especially in this uh, this society. Uh, there are students from around the world that do come to America for the education. So there's a quality of education that is um, valued by people around the world. All right. So uh, continuing on with student loan debt uh, and the effects that it's having uh, and the current 2022 uh, statistics uh, from the educationaldata.org website, a uh, site that student loan debt in the United States is now totaled at $1.749 trillion, with all that money being accredited to 43.4 million borrowers that have federal student loan debt, at least. Uh, and the average public university student borrows about $30,030 to attain a bachelor's degree. This is just averages. Some people will take out way more than 30,000 to get this get these bachelors. Now, we're here in the United States of America, but then we burden our young people with the the cost of getting the education, the higher education, the college level education that will allow for that, that person to be a productive member of society on that level. And then we burden them with having to pay the student loan debt back. And then we burden them with the taxation of the paycheck paycheck. You're paying taxes, federal taxes. You're paying uh, social security tax. You're, so you're, you're being taxed uh, before you get the paycheck. And then you're, you're and you're being re having with the responsibility. Now, one thing about debt, and we're going to kind of go oh. into it a little bit, because I kind of see where you're going with your presentation. Uh, one thing about debt is that you don't always have to go into debt to do something. So we're going to point that out. Mm -hmm. But as you mentioned, there are certain, there are certain uh, fields and professions that do require that you do that level of study so that uh, you can, you know, get the jobs. Now, there's the difference between that Ivy League education, and I think we're going to talk a little bit about that. Do you really need that Ivy League degree to actually work in uh, America and get that 
that level of economic security that you're looking for. And then even with that, how many can afford that, uh, that type of, of degree? Is it really necessary to get? Um, and really the reality of the people that would even qualify <laughs> to get to that level of, of the, you know, Yale, you know, type uh, Harvard, you know, uh, rather type of uh, degrees, you know, Princeton, you know, is it necessary, you know? So I think that even with that, there's a cost, of course, on that level, but looking to, to just kind of get the a little well-roundedness of really what this problem is. It's student loan debt. It, it's it's just just that. It's credit like credit card debt. You know that that credit card debt is not a good thing. People get in bondage when it comes to credit card debt. And then of course there's a student loan debt. So the person is in debt before they can even hit the ground running when it comes to their life as a young person. Yeah. So yeah, sure. Go ahead. Share with us. Tell us yeah. what's going on here. So as we said already, that there is a need for the higher education in the job market. This is practically a necessity at this point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you want to have any kind of well-paying job based around the skills and uh, the skills you have, and the kind of job that you want, the profession that you want to have in the future, you need to go ahead and get that higher education to mm -hmm. even get your foot in the door. Yeah, yeah. So when, and you know, the point is when you apply for jobs, even the during the job announcement, they announce that a four-year degree is, is not really preferred, it's really required, yeah. right? So a uh, four-year degree is required and, and that kind of takes us out of the, uh, out of just having just the two-year degree or mm -hmm. even the trade. Now, here's the thing, a person can go ahead and we're not saying, and I, I definitely uh, am saying too, you don't have to be discouraged because they're requiring a four-year degree. If you have a two-year degree and then you have a, uh, a work experience, go ahead and apply, you know, because there may be something within your resume that attracts the attention of the hiring managers. Mm -hmm. um, but then that that's also resume development and knowing how to present what you do have in a way to where it's attractive and the computer, the AI, <laughs> picks up those key words and then will take your resume and push it to the uh, hiring managers or it'll flag your resume, the computer system, the application uh, will flag your resume as being one that what they should look at, right? right? But even before then, the way that the HR representatives, they do build the announcements and they do say, hey, required uh, that you do need a higher education. And so in order to compete, so we're looking at the competitive end of the job market. Uh, so you would have someone that doesn't have a degree or maybe even a two year degree, you know, and or maybe a trade you know, maybe mm -hmm. not the degree itself, you know, then they submit their, their application. But then in the system, there's a hard stop to say they have to have a four year degree. And then what about the level? And just, you know, as I had shared a little bit earlier here, what about the level, what type of uh, college that that person came from, mm -hmm. right? You're looking at a division one, school or what would a division two school work or what one of the business, you know, there's kind of like a business colleges that, that offer four year degrees too. Does that work? You know, you have the, even the competition within the higher education 
that says, okay, well, my degree is better than this degree. We're accredited, but then we're not accredited on this level. So what are the hiring managers looking at even at that point becomes a question. But it's definitely what I'm saying, a necessity. Yeah. Yes. And uh, if I can say from personal experience mm -hmm. that there is uh, there is a lot of jobs out there that will take personal experience, uh, previous worked experience in that profession, uh, a little bit more than just a degree because you've actually had hands-on experience. Mm -hmm. If you can find some kind of situation to get yourself into that profession at a lower level uh, without going to a four-year degree, mm -hmm. sometimes jobs will look over, you know, the education aspect in uh, in favor of the practical aspect that you have had experience mm -hmm. in that profession. Yeah, that's true. Uh, internships, that used to be real popular back in the day that uh, big uh, companies would offer internships for uh, people who were like about ready to graduate mm -hmm. from college. And so if you get in with the company, I would suggest that's a that's a big one. If you can find an internship with a company to where you can get in with the company before you graduate, what I've recognized is that a lot of times those interns will get the offer, the job offer post-graduation after they've graduated so that and then, you know, they have a job, but then they get to keep the job. So when they start downsizing and rolling people around and rolling people off and, and all of that, a lot of times they'll keep the interns because of the dedication and the time that they've invested in that, in that person. So, yeah, that's something that um, when you're looking at getting that job or, or applying, definitely go ahead and apply, but then uh, there are times, sure, where they'll look at your your work experience and, and take that as, as an opportunity. Uh, but there's still a cost, too, when it comes yes. to getting the education. Yeah. What do you have on your next slide? What's going on there? Uh, on the next slide, we have uh, the second point that I was talking about. Mm -hmm. The demand comes with a higher cost. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so... As take this intern example, uh, for example, mm -hmm. um, the way, the reason that internships have recently been falling off is because they've largely been unpaid, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. while the experience and the on hand practice of the jobs is great, that these internships do not provide anything to live off of. You have mm -hmm. to work a, a a second job just to try and make some money, mm -hmm. which is that's why a good point. Mm -hmm. which is why we don't see a lot of internships right around now. Okay, but yeah. They started to push back on, you know, internships and uh, be having interns, uh, not all together, but for a good part, mm -hmm. in favor of people who are just willing to get a four-year degree and uh, mm -hmm. go out and apply for those jobs. Mm -hmm. So. This higher education needs to be, you know, corresponded with wages, with at least wages to help people like me and other college students how to get ahead of our financial uh, burdens and our financial debt. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's part of uh, the reason that we see a lot of uh, people not doing internships or we see a lot of talk around student debt uh, with wages as well, and not just what the government can and cannot do to help us with our debt, but like what can these businesses do to also attract more people to their company, attract uh, the newer generation, the people who are fresh out of college with bright ideas in their head and willingness to put their ideas into action. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that um, it, it, attracting talent is is really something that HR reps, they do, you know, it's, it, 
they want young talent. They want people that are moldable. You know, you can mold the person to the culture, things of that nature. But one of the things, too, with the higher education demand comes higher costs. You can get the uh, the education, but then with that, you're coming out of getting the education. Once you graduate it, okay, we're, you're in debt. Okay, so then what do you do to pay the debt back? Uh, you know, because debt has to be budgeted in. So what I'm hearing you say, too, is is there are there jobs and opportunities out there to where you can get on board and then still afford to pay the the debt and as well as live the living expenses? Yeah. You know, and I think part of what what happens is. Uh, people will get the education and then have the debt once they graduate, but then they don't have a place to work, right? That's why you see people taking whatever job that they can after graduation, mm -hmm. you know, in order to, to make ends meet. So I think there may be, uh, there, of course, there's a responsibility to look at what that education is worth before you even sign on the dotted line, right? So what's the education worth? Number one, do I need to get the four-year degree or can I uh, get the two-year degree and then, or the trade and the certificate and work and just get right into the trade, right? So go in yeah. as entry level and then grow in the company. That's a way. Yeah. As and far as the debt. Yeah. And part of this conversation is to identify that what identifying the person, what do they want to do for mm -hmm. their profession? Mm -hmm. How do they want to try and go about it? Because if you want to try and be, you know, a CEO right out of the gate, uh, after you, so get you need to start your own business. If you want to be the CEO right out of the gate, then start your own business. Right. Which there's nothing wrong with that. OK, no. nothing wrong with it. But don't go to college and then think you want to be CEO of a Fortune 100, Fortune 500 company. Right. Right. I hear what you're saying there. And there's some people think they're just going to climb that corporate ladder and it's going to be all right. So there's a there's a fallacy there, something they're living mm -hmm. on, on the things that just aren't true, aren't real. I right. dig it we do need to take a step back and realize what is obtainable with our yeah. degrees for i'm drawing on my own personal experience because that's uh what i have readily available that's okay me. yeah for my personal experience i want to get into politics yeah. and right now i didn't expect to get this position but uh i got it because of my previous work because of my hands-on experience and because of my college experience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I was able to get this position and then I can start to grow out. I realized that I wasn't going to be able to be, you know, in a position where I could, you know, uh, be high up in the campaign staff. I realized I was going to have to work my way up to realize that I had to go for uh, one of the lower positions to then get the knowledge there and then work my way up. Uh, mm -hmm. But I had, I had to realize that I'm not going to go out of this gate, you know, being some big hotshot, you know, strolling my way into a campaign office and saying, Hey, I want this big position. Well, and, and even with that, to understand too, I mean, you, you, the, the aspiration to aspire to, to do that is, is great because there are a lot of campaigns that don't, that don't have the support that they need anyway to win. Right. So mm -hmm. they don't have the, the research analysts, they don't have the campaign ma uh, manager or the treasurer or uh, others that can, you know, come in and focus. So what is it? It's just one person running to do everything. Now, 
with uh, the education part of it, there is a lot. Political science is there is a degree. I mean, I, mm-hmm. I did a lot of uh, undergrad work and and focusing on in the study of political science. It, it it's important to know and it's important to have. So having a career in it and growing in it, I think what you're doing is taking the opportunities that are available and you're still in the field. It, it, one thing that we call it, it's called perfecting your craft. If this is what you want to do, then do it, do it. Because what you're here and we're so appreciative that you are here, Nathan, is that you are a part of the political campaign team. And it's all about team when it comes to politics. You know, there's it's not an individual thing because even the candidate needs a team in order Mm -hmm. to help this this uh, thing move. You know, this uh, campaign move. Uh, So even the president has a cabinet, has a team, you know, the vice president, even the first lady has a team, you know. So Mm -hmm. it's still about team. And I think that one of the things that we appreciate about your uh, you being here and your experience is that you are a team player. You know, you understand that this is team, teamwork. So I think the point in getting back to the cost of the education is that, okay, well, we're, we're all volunteering here, right? Mm-hmm. And there's some campaigns that can pay, right? And that right. may be the, the ones that have already been in the field, uh, you know, you have your, I did a, a, a re- background update on Josh Hawley. You know, he's got mm-hmm. probably $9 million, $14 million already set up for the campaign that he's going to run that he hasn't ran yet, right? Mm-hmm. So out of that, there's a budget that's already available to bring on people that can, that can uh, do the work, in the campaign work, right? Yeah. And and that that is is part of what political the politics, the political studies is all about. So uh, there's still and then there's there are other campaigns out there, too, maybe not on the level of a Senate campaign, but you have a, a local campaigns, mm-hmm. you know, and, but that's kind of where it comes from. It does come from donations. So the cost uh, of the education I think that when you take and you were, you had mentioned, look, they're not paying for um, they're when you come in and you uh, you know do the summer intern. You know, there's they're not paying for interns, so people mm-hmm. kind of drop off. But I think the advantage to know that if you do have a passion in something, if you're willing to take some of your own sweat and invest it in you, mm-hmm. you know that offsets cost of education because I think what we're sharing here is an opportunity that isn't going to come uh, without the sweat equity, right? Mm -hmm. So you can get all of the education in theory, but until your boots hit the ground, until our boots hit the ground to actually do it, there's no real learning. That's the practicum part of learning that I think that education and and people that are getting the higher education they miss they think it's all theory in the books Mm -hmm. so they say okay we're going to take and we're going to spend all this money theory in the books well while you're getting that theory in the books then you need to find a way to practically apply it in your life so that it becomes something that you do right So with the higher uh, education demand comes higher costs. Now that cost, just like what we're sharing, can be, of course, the student debt, which, Mm -hmm. you know, the average student coming out of um, some of these schools, you know, can be what, $40,000, you know, um, uh, you know, $60,000, $100,000, you know, just depending what you're looking at, um, what you're looking at studying right Mm -hmm. what you're looking at investing in that knowledge base um so that right there is the the hard part okay how do i get to get the education how do i get the education without having to spend the the 60 80 hundred thousand dollars that this tuition uh is paying is saying that i have to pay well 
one of the things that I uh, always suggest is uh, let's see what you can do in a two-year college, yeah. right? Talk yeah. about that. And that's part of uh, the solution. Uh, I, I'm going to jump around in the slides a little bit, but that's part of the solution that uh, the campaign is trying to promote, mm -hmm. that we need to have a, uh, a, a resurgence of uh, faith in the two-year degree, mm -hmm. in the two-year program, that these high schools and in here in Missouri, we do have a high school program uh, to give you college credits to help you up to like start your way to getting a, a degree. And there are, I forget the name of the program, but the program here in Missouri uh, offers students to in high school to get uh, started on the two year degree. Uh, or you can even exit with a two-year degree in some in some high schools, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and then all you would need to do is just pick your college of choice, and then go for two years, and then boom, you have your four-year degree with half the debt. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And you know what that what that requires is that the students stay focused in high school and and taking those classes, extra classes, or being able mm -hmm. to study the test, you know, through what the the requirement is in order to get the degree signing up for the classes um so or the programs as well mm -hmm. so that you can participate which does take another active responsibility on the students part the students families part the mom the dad uh those that are coaching in it, encouraging the young person when it comes to higher education. So, you know, when we're talking about student loan debt, I think that part of this discussion is to the point to where, yes, there, there has to be a responsible, the res, part of that responsibility does uh, rely. It's part of the student's responsibility. Yeah. Like you had mentioned, let's look at what is it that I'm really wanting to do? Uh, uh, how many students say, okay, well, you know, th their mom and dad says, well, what do you want to go? What do you want to learn about? Well, I don't know, you know? And so they say, okay, well, I want to study um, liberal arts. I want a liberal arts degree. And so they go to a liberal, and there's nothing wrong with a liberal arts degree. It's a great degree. You go to school and everything. But then when you get there, you're living on campus. You're not doing well, getting your grades and you're studying in maybe you know you might have to retake some classes you know that's another big one that adds to the cost you know and having to to retake so you know i think that the opportunity the idea of a two-year degree is a, a great idea in that it will allow for the student to get their feet wet when it comes to uh, participating in college and then, you know, acquiring it without having to blow a lot of money. Right. Right. Yeah. So what does uh, Dr. Ross do as far as supporting uh, universal pre-K and uh, universal pre-K and uh, quality education and, and funding for public schools and, you know, all of that. What does she say about that? Yeah. So, uh, if you take a look uh, at the websites, uh, uh, rossforussenate.com, and you uh, take a look at her platform, you can go ahead and see that uh, the plan for universal pre-K is that there is no upfront cost to getting your child into these uh, early uh, education programs, that you can bring your child to preschool, uh, you can bring your child to kindergarten uh, without having to pay, uh, you know, fees to the school or, uh, you mm -hmm. know, supply costs. Mm -hmm. And uh, what does that do for for the parent? You know, say, for instance, you know, I'm thinking, well, if if I know that I have I have a pre-K, uh, pre-kindergarten child age group and, you know, I can get an opportunity for them to go to a pre-K that kind of eliminates or cuts down on the daycare bill there too, doesn't yeah. it? 
Yeah, no, uh, the, the universal pre-K program would go ahead and uh, take all, well, not all, but take most of that financial stress mm -hmm. about worrying about getting your child an early education, an early start into mm -hmm. the education system. It would go ahead and take that burden away from you and have the government help you out. Mm -hmm. It would take away from that, you know, some of those months, people are really pinching at pennies, just trying to scrape by. And this program would make sure your child has a place to go during mm -hmm. the day while you work and that that isn't going to cost you an arm and a leg, too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, you know, that what now you said the G word government. Yes. have the government pay that makes some people cringe doesn't it i think yeah. it does uh you know because even even hearing it but what we're saying and when it says universal pre-k or these government opportunities this is just a way to vote to invest in the citizens the people yeah. of the united states of america so if you're going to invest in, you know, people will say, okay, we need stronger, um, we need, uh, you know, stronger laws and, and, you know, prison, you know, prisons to where, you know, we can need to lock up criminals. Well, it costs more to lock up criminals than it does to, to educate. So if that, those dollars were invested in, funding and education even to the level of pre-k now there's a there is a uh, pre-k um, group or it was called head start now head start i don't know if it's still around but i believe it is and they call it maybe a little something different but the head start program was a great program and it was a program before kindergarten now mm -hmm. I was one of those pilot kids in this in the 60s that was part of that. OK, I may have been one of the first little students in the Head Start program that was highlighted here in the greater Kansas City, Missouri area. So people have thought about how do we engage children in the educational system for success and you know even before the 70s 80s 90s and here we are 2022 right mm -hmm. so this is not a new concept but it was called head start and with that i think that that helps to it, the education is from the cradle on until they get old enough to, you know, a person is, you should be educated throughout your lifespan. And I say cradle to the grave because I'm still learning, mm -hmm. but we're, we're talking about college level and paying for tuition in this conversation. So, mm -hmm. you know, this would be an opportunity so that you can see early on, what is the student good at? What is, mm -hmm. what is it that they're interested in? And then there won't be as much of a question. And uh, another thing that I'm noticing is that she believes in free and affordable two-year college or technical school tuition. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, so the campaign platform right now is that uh, we want people to go out and get the job that they want with half the cost mm -hmm. to getting it. Mm -hmm. uh, so we want people to be able to Go for a two-year education. Go for that associate's degree. And try and get your foot in the door with what you want to do as your profession. Mm -hmm. I have a friend back in the Kansas City area for everyone. I'm in the St. Louis area right now going to mm -hmm. college. Uh, but I have a friend back in uh, the Kansas City area. And he went through the program. He went through the program in high school to get the to uh, come out uh, of high school with a close to a two year associate's degree. Mm -hmm. He just went to college for a couple of classes, maybe one year, one and a half years. And he, now he's making, you know, $38,000 a year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, and which is, which is where you can take care of yourself. You know, yeah. let's not talk in inflation right now. It's, Oh, <sighs> you know, things are, you know, looking, 
kind of bleak on that end when it comes to finances. But yeah, the investment. So he it, he is working uh, a job to where it's uh, you know it's helping him along. It's it's not the nine dollar an hour job or whatever ten dollar an hour job, you know. And he's able to to keep growing and growing his career from a good starting point as opposed to being in debt um, and having to grow from that. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, one thing about the um, the platform and education, you know, she's mentions that uh, to to have the free and affordable uh, two year uh two year or technical school to degree tuition free or affordable tuition to ensure that young people are not saddled with debt. And, you know, with that, it doesn't, people get, get upset when you, when you say free, because here the government is having to pay for it. But what about affordable? That's, that's another option. And so maybe on one end, you know, we're not going to figure this out on this bridge right now. Right. But no, maybe, no, no. maybe, you know, if, if you pick up some of it on one end, then on the other end, you're still you're getting a uh, better, uh, better person when it comes to economically speaking, uh, participating a citizen to where they can participate in the economy. And, you know, we had already mentioned whether you're wanting to uh, be a, if you want to be that CEO, get that, go ahead, start that business. But, you know, just know that once you, you know, once you get into it, it's still, a, it's still a climbing process. It's not something that's going to happen all of a sudden. If you want to, you know, be a doctor, of course, you, you need to get the formal education to be the doctor or, mm -hmm. you know, the lawyer and, you know, those other professions that do require formal education because you don't want to hurt anyone. You don't want to tell anyone the wrong thing. But then the getting a if you're interested in it, something that can you can get started with a two year degree or technical degree and then your work experience and volunteering, that's an option and an opportunity. But we definitely need to encourage people to to look into and, and support Americans in the education process. If the world, the rest of the world values our education here, then we should, too. We should value it and then offer it uh, to people here, citizens in America, to where they can have a brighter future. Young people can have a brighter future. Yeah. So, you know, Dr. Gina, she is for young people. <laughs> She's definitely for young people. And, you know, with that, that those are the concerns of young people. You know, how am I going to? How am I going to make money? Really? How am I going to take care of myself? How am I going to get out of my parents' home? How, you know, things of that nature. So you want to, you, you, you want to vote for a candidate and you want to support and participate in a political campaign and, and, and follow and, uh, you know, give a good word of mouth for a candidate that is for you. Right. Uh, that's that's kind of where we are with this as well. You know, the platform speaks on education, and I think it's a great, uh, great opportunity for us to to take advantage of uh, of the support that Dr. Gina is offering. Now, I do want to um, let's go ahead and jump into. I want to go out to the website here. There's a there's a you can see the big donate button. <laughs> in our in our room here and that's something that i really would encourage you to do is to donate to the campaign uh, i'm going to take you out here to where you can also see where you can uh, send your information if you want to volunteer so let let me just do that i'll share the screen over to the website and here Again, uh, the Ross for US and you can uh, get involved. Here's an opportunity to do something that will impact the community. 
So help Dr. Gina Ross make a difference. And of course, you can definitely donate. You'll click that donate button and that donate button will take you to where you can donate. Uh, you can also mail your donations in to Dr. Gina Ross for U.S. Senate, P.O. Box 1591, Platte City, Missouri, 64079. And if you want to drop a line, you're interested in doing some volunteering, go ahead and here, join the Dr. Gina Ross for U.S. Senate campaign. You can put your name in here and uh, email, if you'd like a, your phone number and just a quick message and you know we'll get back with you uh, how on how you can support the campaign you know volunteering and of course like your yourself like uh nathan uh if you're a student like nathan we, we definitely want to hear from you because young people are the future the the future and here's an opportunity for you to have that voice so you can volunteer you can make a donation and support the campaign in that way for sure. Well, Nathan, thank you so much. What a great, uh, you know, overview of that. And thanks for being able to share with us your opinion and your life experiences as well concerning this uh, issue of student loan debt. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Definitely. Thank you for having me on. Well, no problem. Well, we'll be... <laughs> We'll be chatting a little later too, huh? Hold yeah. on there a minute. Let me wrap this up. All right. Thanks again. We're better together.